X-Pan range cameras, X-Pan 1, X-Pan 2, manufactured from 1998 through until about 2006, 2007. Fantastic, very unique range finder, 35 millimeter cameras. Unique because, unlike most uh, 35 millimeter range finder cameras, this camera offers um, two formats, the standard 24 by 36 uh, format and also, if you see here, the, the very wide um, film gate, 24 by 65 millimeter, which gives absolutely superb panoramic results. Uh, my name is Jonathan Harris. I'm gonna run through the various models available. I'm gonna run through the various lenses available and also talk about what you need to check if you're buying secondhand. Okay, so Hasselblad X-Pan cameras. This is the, um, the Model 1. Um, Introduced in 1998, there was a Model 2 introduced about four years later. They were manufactured through until about 2006. Um, biggest difference between the Model 2 and the Model 1 is that the Model 2 had an extended shutter speed range. So if low light photography is your thing, then certainly look at the Model 2 version. Uh, the cameras were introduced with um, three lenses. This is the 45mm lens that's fitted. There was also a 90mm lens, the 90 f4 here, and the the wide angle 30mm lens. This is the 30mm lens. The 30mm lens is used with a um, ring with a with a viewfinder mechanism which just bolts onto the top of the camera. The um, the inbuilt viewfinder gives you the field of view for the 45 and the 90mm lenses. Um, also available are various lens hoods um, for the 45 and the 90 and a separate lens hood for the 35 and also center filters. Now the center filter um, comes as standard with the 30mm lens. If you're buying the 30mm lens, make sure you get it. Um, the sensor filter is available for the 45 and the 90mm lenses, although it was an optional extra. Okay. So what I'm going to do is first of all talk about the various features that the camera offers and then run through what you need to check if you are buying second hand. Now one important thing to point out right, right from the, the, the start is that these are getting old, they're around 20 years old, spares aren't necessarily available for them. These are expensive cameras, there is an outside chance that if something goes wrong with it in the future you can end up with a brick. Um, you should be well aware of that before buying them. Generally speaking, they are very, very reliable. It's unusual for them to develop faults, but there is always that outside chance that something electronic in particular might fail. And if that happens, it may not be fixable. So please do bear that in mind. Okay, so let's start with the top plate. On the top plate, you've got the, sh the shutter speed dial there. You've got the green A for, for aperture priority automatic. So you can use, e use it either in manual or in aperture priority. Shutter release there. Um, here you have the exposure compensation, uh, the drive control, single, continuous, uh, and also the lock button. Obviously there you have a, um, a, a, a flash shoe should you need it. Just looking at the front, so you've got the ASA dial, so you can set the ASA there or set it to DX. Lens release is just, um, just there. Very standard setup. And on the front, you've got two rangefinder windows, a rangefinder window there, a rangefinder window there, and just the, uh, the bright line illuminator in the middle. A flash socket just there. At the bottom, as I pointed out earlier, just all you have there is tripod bush, quarter inch, and the battery, uh, and the battery um, compartments. Just looking on the back, you have the um, a little display here, which gives you gives you gives, gives you various items of information. But much more importantly, you have the um, the panorama standard. Uh, select a switch here. So if I open the back using the little lever there, um, you'll see that as I move this switch from the panoramic position to the standard position, you'll see these two blinds come in left and right, which masks the, um, the film gate down to the 2436. So if you're using it as a standard rangefinder camera, standard format, that's the position you would use. If you want to use it in panor panorama, panoramic format, you just move that switch back there, he says, there you go, which moves the two masks out of the way, which gives you this full 24 by 65 um, panoramic um, images. Yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Film load, pretty straightforward. You've got the DX, uh, DX contacts there if you're using them. Cassette goes in there, film tip goes in there, close the back hands, and away you go. 
you can get DARPs correction lenses for them, although they're getting very hard to get hold of and very expensive. Uh, you just put a little, a little um, screwdriver or, or something very carefully under there and the, the eyepiece just slides up. Okay, so fairly basic functionality. What I'm going to do now is just run through what you need to check if you're buying these, these things secondhand. You, you do need to check them very carefully for the reasons that I, um, I mentioned earlier. I'd look at three things. I'd look at the, the general cosmetics, I'd look at the mechanics and the electronics, and I would look at the glass, look at the optics. So first of all, just have a general look at the cosmetics. Now, the, the gray finish on these cameras does mark very, very easily. Uh, it's, not, it's not the greatest of finish at all, in all honesty. You can see there on the little feet on the camera, there's, um, there's metal showing through on this one. And in fact, on this camera here, somebody's actually fairly badly attempted to, to touch up wear on one of the corners. Um, so you're unlikely to find one totally like new. I mean, you, you're, you, almost always you'll see little spots of metal through on the base. But what, just, just check it over carefully, check around the strap lugs, check on the bottom, and just ascertain how much use it's had. You don't want something that's been really, really heavily used. Um, you want something that has been cared for. Now, one trick to bear in mind is if you, um, if you switch the camera on, and you hold the AEB button then, as you switch the camera on, it will actually give you the number of exposures um, that the camera has taken. The figure it gives you, I think on this one is 125. That's 1,250 um, exposures. You just add a zero as the number it gives you. That gives you a good indication of how many pictures it's taken. But you still need to look at the cosmetics because a camera might only have taken two or three films, yet it might have been completely abused in that time. On the other hand, it might have been used very carefully. It might have taken a thousand films and still be close to like new. So don't rely entirely upon that figure. Do, do, do also look at the general cosmetics. I mean, look, look around the... Um, Look around the filter room of the lens or the lenses. Just make sure there are no dings there. Make sure there are no nasty dings on the corners. Um, the other thing to check if you're looking at the cosmetics is just have a look at the, the lens mount on the camera and also have a look at the lens mount on the, um, oh, sorry, the, uh, the lens mount on the camera there and the rear lens mount on the lens itself. Just see how much wear is showing. If there's a lot of wear, you'll soon, you'll soon see it. So with, with a bit of time, with a bit of care, you can, you can build up a picture in your own mind of how, much, of how much use the camera's had. As I said, a little bit of use, that's inevitable. A lot of use, really I'd walk away from the camera. Just on the lens, just make sure there isn't a massive amount of wear on the, on the bayonet and a massive amount of wear on the focusing or on the aperture knurling around there. Okay, so once you've satisfied yourself that cosmetically it, it's clean, it hasn't been abused, just check, over the, um, just check over the mechanics and the electronics. What I would do first of all is just set the camera down to its slowest speed, set it down to one second. Um, you can go slow on that, obviously, but uh, to test the shutter, really, just, just start a second, that's fine. And just fire it, and just make sure that you can hear it opening and closing. Um, also have a look at the uh, shutter itself, and just make sure there's no, um, there's no nasty marks, no nasty scratching, no sign that somebody's put their finger through the shutter. Just make sure that's clean. Uh, you can fire the shutter, you can just quite clearly see if it's opening or closing. Um, Increase the speed to half a second. Obviously you'd expect it to be quicker. Quarter of a second, quicker still. And just, um, just move it through the various uh, settings just to make sure it is doing what it should be doing. Take the lens off. Take it up to the uh, top speed, the thousandth. Just hold it up to a light and just fire it just to make sure you can see light coming through. Now you're not, um, what you're not doing is timing the shutter, obviously. What you're doing is just making sure you can see light coming through the film gate. Um, with these cameras, if it's opening and closing as it should be on the slower speeds, and if it's opening and closing on the, the high speed, you can be fairly sure that, um, that the intermittent speed will be fine. You can be fairly sure the shutter will in fact be fine. You can also, also just look through and just, just check out the, uh, the metering, just to make sure it's metering roughly as it should be. There's a little plus and minus in the viewfinder. Just make sure the, the meter is reading within about half a stop of what you'd expect it to be. You can compare it to another camera, but don't expect it to be exactly the same. They just never are. So you've checked the meter. You've checked the shutter speed is working. Also have a look at the range finder. Um, 
with a lens on, just just look 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 at look at something in the distance, and just make sure that the rangefinder itself is is a, is aligning vertically. So you, with the rangefinder, you'll see two images. You want to make sure those two images come across and they align vertically. They shouldn't be doing this, and they shouldn't be doing this. As the two images come across, they should align vertically like that. And if you're looking at uh, maybe a church tower, um, just make sure the tower just comes across as it should. And also look at something at infinity, a long, long way away. And just make sure that as the lens moves to infinity, it comes in focus at infinity. So as you get to infinity, you don't want it going beyond infinity, and you want to make sure it reaches infinity. So just um, just, just check that. Um, put a film in, run a film through, try it on the shutter speeds, and just make sure you're getting the results you should be getting. Um, it's not essential to run a film through, it's, it's a good backup, but if you do run a film through, just make sure you run through the other checks that I've outlined as well. Um, okay, so you've checked the shutter, you've checked the uh, range find on the camera, check the lens, just make sure the aperture, I mean, these are generally, they're very simple lenses, they're, gem they're generally very reliable, just take the lens off and just make sure that um, the aperture is opening and closing as it should be, and make sure it's moving smoothly. Make sure the um, the focusing itself is move, moving smoothly. If it's overly tight or overly loose, that's a sign it might have been knocked. It's also a sign that it could need a service. Not necessarily an issue with the with, with the lenses, because as I said, they're relatively easy to get, to get service because they are quite simple. There's nothing in there apart from focusing um, and the aperture mechanism. So that's the mechanics. Um, if you've got a clean bill of health with those checks, you, you can be you can be fairly, fairly sure that, that the camera is mechanically okay. One final check I would do at this point is just make sure that the various light seals are okay. Um, rubber light seals do disintegrate over time. Uh, there are rubber light seals down here and around here. Just make sure there's no sign of them becoming very sticky and tar-like. Uh, if the, if the, the foam is becoming uh, if it's lost its sponginess, that's a sign the light seals do need doing. Um, a camera that's been serviced would have had them changed. If you're looking at a camera that's 20 years old and it's never been serviced, chances are the light seals will need to be done. So I'd look at that. I'm um, also have a quick look in the battery compartment just to make, just to make sure that it's clean, there's no corrosion inside. Uh, quite unusual, but it's, it's worth a quick check if you can. Okay, so you've looked at the cosmetics, you've looked at the, um, the mechanics. Um, optics now. Look into the rangefinder. Don't look through the rangefinder. Look into the rangefinder and shine a bright light into the rangefinder from the from the back and from the front, and just make sure that uh, there's no nasty fungus or scratching or marking inside. I'll, I'll put up I'll put a link up that helps you that will help you identify fungus. Um, any signs of fungus at all, walk away from the camera, it's a nightmare. Also, if you're looking into the rangefinder, make sure you can't see any funny rainbow type effects inside, a bit like oil on water. If you can see that, that's a sign of separation within the rangefinder, which, which again can be quite a serious problem. Do the same with the lens. So just take it off the camera and just hold it up to the light. Just make sure you can see nothing nasty inside. Look from the Back, look from the front, uh, make sure it's clean, no misting, no fungus. Um, one other thing to check for is something called Schneideritis. Now, this is something that Schneider lenses suffer from, hence the name, um, and also X-Pan lenses do suffer from it. Um, I'll put a link up, or I'll put a photograph on up rather, just showing it in detail. But if you look into the lens itself, Look around the outside of the the front element. What you'll see is little little spots, little white spots all the way around. This does have it to to a. Uh, it, it's, it's it's got it slightly. It's not that visible. The thirty the thirty mil I showed you earlier um, does have it quite quite significantly. Now this is caused by the black paint on the outside of the of the lens optics actually beginning to break down. So if you have a concave lens, it's thin in the middle and it's thick on the outside with wide edges, so it's, uh, it's this shape. Um, or if you have a group of concave, a concave lens group, it'll be thinner in the middle, thicker on the outside like this. Um, they paint the outside edge of the glass with a special uh, blackening 
paint and that paint can begin to, to disintegrate. If it does, you get these little sort of spots forming inside. Now, it's very common with Hasselblad, uh, particularly with um, these X-Pan lenses. Um, a little bit isn't going to affect performance in the slightest, but it should affect it should affect resale. I mean, you, you don't pay you don't pay top dollar for a lens with bad Schneideritis. When it gets very very bad, I suppose there is a chance that it might start affecting performance. Perhaps you'll get a little bit more flare if you're shooting into the sun. But what I'd, what I'd recommend doing if you see it on a lens is just is just test the lens out and just satisfy yourself that it isn't going to affect performance and then just you know make sure you're paying the right price for the lens as i said common with hassle with hassle at x-pan particularly fairly common with the 45 mil a lot more common with the 30 mil um less 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 so with the 90 mil it's uh, it's, it's less of an issue with the 90 mil but particularly with the um with the 30 mil do keep an eye open for that um while we're talking about optics generally also check over the uh, the viewfinder very carefully as i said with the rangefinder on the camera just look into it to make sure it's uh, clean both sides look through it to make sure that the the, the, the frames are visible and all all coming up as they should be um also check out the the bubble that's a spirit level and the bubble's gone. Uh, quite a common problem with this particular viewfinder. Um, I've tried to get these replaced, but I can't actually find a company that will replace the spirit levels. Not the end of the world. I mean, obviously you can mount the, you can mount the camera itself to, to, a, to a base with a bubble on. Um, but given that these are selling for £2,000 plus easily, it's a bit of a frustration if the bubble is, is missing. And again, if the bubble is missing, make sure you get the lens at a sensible price. Okay, so you've checked the um, you've checked the ca the, the, the camera's uh, cosmetic cosmetics. You've satisfied yourself that it's in nice, decent, clean condition. You've checked the optics. You've checked the electronics, and you've checked that the glass is clean. If you've got a, a, a check for all those in all those areas, you can be fairly fairly sure. In fact, you can be very sure you've got a good, dependable camera. As I said. Always bear in mind there is an outside chance that if the electronics go on this, it may not be repairable. Uh, but that, that is unusual, and generally speaking, these are really decent, dependable bits of kit. I hope that's useful. If you have any comments, please stick them in the boxes below. Um, otherwise, please subscribe and like, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.